Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Sub-Saharan Flanners, and today I have the amazing pleasure of chatting with an old high school friend from Khaboroni, Botswana, Lone. Lone, hi. Lone is joining us in Melbourne. Yeah, in Melbourne. Hi. Hi, hi everyone. What time is it? Um, it is currently half past 12, midnight. Yeah. 30 minutes past midnight, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us um, and joining me. It's so amazing to chat and reconnect after all these years. Like I told you, you do not change. Like you look the same as you did when we were in school. And I'm so excited that you can join me on this journey as I attempt to change the narrative around African travel. So today, Lana is going to talk to me about what it's like to travel the world on a Botswana passport. Uh, Lonnie, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Nice, nice to, to chat with you, uh, Diana. I, I would like to think that a few things have changed. A little bit of fluff, maybe, perhaps now. Yes, definitely. Um, fluff, fluff has manifested. <laughs> fluff has manifested fully. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I, I, I've been working on it. Um, yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm like, like, like you've said, Diana. Um, I'm my, my name is Lonnie. I'm from Botswana. Um, born and raised and moved to Melbourne when I was about 19, um, where I currently live and work in Melbourne. Um, and so from the ages of 19 to now, basically more than a decade, I've you know had the pleasure of traveling around you know certain parts of the world from Melbourne, on my uh, Botswana passport, and it's been it's been it's been quite the journey at times. Yeah. What are some of the places that you've been? Um, I have been, of course, back home, um, and you know, to some of the surrounding countries. Um, I've been to America, mainland, and did a little bit of travel around there. Um, I've been to Hawaii, uh, I've been to the UK, I've been to uh, Malaysia and Singapore, um, I've been to the island of Borneo, I've also been to Fiji. I think those are the main places that I've been to on my, on my passport. Oh my god, so jealous about the island of Borneo, Indonesia, right? That's, that is on my list. That's on my list. Yeah, yeah, no. No, oh, yeah, it was it was it was pretty good. I think it 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 it's 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 actually uh, shared between Malaysia, um, Indonesia, and Brunei. If I'm if I'm not yeah, if I'm not mistaken, but it's yeah, it's, it was a fantastic place. Um, lots to see there, and I think it was actually my first island holiday. So like yeah. it, it has a, definitely has a special special place in my yeah. heart. Yeah. yeah. What would you say is some of the biggest challenges um, are some of the biggest challenges that you face um, on your bots passport? So you've done some African countries, some regional mm. countries. You've done yeah. America, Hawaii, Fiji. You've done Southeast Asia. Yeah. Um, I think I think I think regionally in 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 Southern Africa. Um, there weren't that many challenges. I mean, as particularly if you're you, you're you're traveling within the same economic block, um, SADC or SADC. Um, I think you know travel is pretty pretty open um, for for people who are citizens of those countries. So in that regard, there weren't that many challenges there. I think a lot of the challenges, as, as I'm sure you can attest to, is when you sort of start trying to go to like Europe or or America. Um, America the first time around was um, you, you had to do this the, the you had to apply for their visa. Uh, I think it's it's is it the B one or something visa where it's like a a visitor visitor visa where you can go to go there several times. Um, but it was it was it was a bit of a lengthy process. You you go through like a security protocol thing. You handed lots of papers. And at the time, I think I remember being surprised that I had to even hand in like a uh, uh, like this URL thing from from my Facebook. So they literally go through your social media <laughs> and then sort of monitor your activity before you 
Wow. You, you get given a visa, yeah. And then not only that, like after they, they go through all your things, you actually have to go for an actual interview um, at the US consulate um, with somebody, you know, face-to-face -face interview who actually sort of like corroborates your story and, 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 and sort of goes through some of your paperwork with you just to make sure that, you know, things are, are, are supposedly what you say they are. Yeah. Um, I think it, it was challenging in that regard because I think there's there's a fee as well, and then you know just the 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 the, the bureaucratic bureaucratic sort of you know you know, barriers that you have to cross through um, yeah. was was challenging. Yeah. Um, but I, the one the one good thing about that kind of visa was that after I got that visa, I it was a ten year sort of um, you can go and come back visa and it oh. served me well because like the since I when I went back to like Hawaii and I went back to the mainland subsequent times it was just like oh okay you know okay, dude, like, yeah. My, yeah yeah that's because of my passport don't need to ask anyone I'm leaving so and okay I have it I think yeah it's probably still valid for like five more years so it's really it's still gonna really cool. yeah I'm still gonna yeah I'm still gonna rip the the, the 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 enjoy the benefits of that one if I ever do go back stateside. Yeah. Um, Europe. The reason why I still haven't done the rest of mainland Europe is largely because of my African visa, because I know that I'd have to apply, for example, for a Schengen visa, which is just an additional step. Um, the UK being the only place I've been to was largely because of you know con commonwealth and i don't I, you know botswana is probably one of the the, the one of the, the, the visa lucky free. yeah visa free yeah for, okay i think yeah. namibia too yeah yeah so botswana and namibia and a few some of some some of the other commonwealth countries do get visa uh you get, sort of you get visa free travel there if you're visiting for like 30 days it's still it's funny though like you say visa free but like you know you I'm still so conditioned to, you know, expecting the unexpected and having to be having, you know, being asked so many questions that, you know, the day I went there, I, I had like a dossier of like everything that I needed, you know, just ready to what go. Like, to <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like bank account statements, like, yeah. you know, letter letter from my job saying this guy is employed, he's coming back, like, you know. Um, but like I think I think the, the UK as far as like being a tourist, it wasn't that that um especially, you know, th through a Commonwealth passport, it wasn't the worst experience. Right. It's just that I've kind of also my my travel like experiences have largely been dictated by the fact that certain places I just know I can't go because yeah. or, or, or I, I could go but it would require additional active steps so you know if you've just got a, a week or two off sometimes you, 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 you you're going to elect to go to a place where you can quick, quickly grab your passport and go yeah that's um, yeah, that's really yeah. it's interesting. It's interesting also that um that some commonwealth countries can go visa free to the UK and others can't because Uganda is part of the commonwealth but we cannot go into the UK visa free. I've applied twice and I've been rejected both times. So um but um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's an, that's also some weird like well, discrepancy going on with the UK and these like colonial countries. But um so Fiji is visa free for Botswana, right? Mm, mm. Yeah, I think. For yeah, yeah, no, Fiji was Fiji was 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 good. was a, was a positive experience all around. I think. Um, uh, sorry, just going back to your previous question about yeah, Fiji, sure. I, your previous question was um, what 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 were some of my, the challenges on on the passport, and it was largely that sort of I talked about. You know, trying to get visas for the US, which was a bit tricky, and yeah. Europe was definitely tricky, but I stayed away from it. Um, Asia, um, largely Malaysia and Singapore. I think I think sometimes like you 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 do get a bit of like suspicion and and you know 
a bit of oh, what's this? Um, you know, funny looks and people just being curious about Wait, the, where your path is from. Yeah, you know, just just to say, hold that thought. Asia, yeah. Malaysia, and Singapore are both visa free for Botswana, correct? Yes. However, yeah, I think you, you, you get, know, you get, you get, oh yeah, for sure. I think I my, told you the story before, where where like I was on an um I was I was I was on a domestic flight in Malaysia going to Kuala Lumpur and they wouldn't let me onto the flight because my eventual destination was Australia because I was on this Botswana passport supposedly going to Australia they wouldn't let me board a regional and local flight to go to the capital where they could scan my actual passport and see whether or not I've got this visa that I'm telling them that I've got just because they were like, oh, okay, you're on this Botswana passport. We don't even know what Botswana is. And you're claiming you're going to Australia. And no, you're not boarding the flight. And I'm like, I'm trying to board a flight <laughs> to KL where you can actually verify my story. And it, it was like a, 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 like a battle and an argument with these guys right. for like, right. yeah. So th- th- that sort of suspicion and that lack of yeah. familiarity is, is, is some of the, the challenges that you face, especially if you go in, into deeper areas where people, you know, are maybe, you know, uh, less used to diversity. You know? Yeah. 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 That's, so, that's so interesting. It's a lot of these Asian countries are super alluring because they're visa free, but it's not like mm. racial profiling free. It's not like, Passport nationality profiling free. So it's really interesting that that added like, you know, that you share. So that's, it's really amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited and proud of you that you're, you're all settled in Australia and you're happy and you're comfortable. And now you have Australian residents. Is that correct? Like, yeah, I've got yeah. Australian permanent residents. Yes. Yeah, that's brilliant, by the way. Woo! Um, super exciting, exciting times. Has there, has there yeah. been a difference? For you in as now that you have that passport i mean that stamp in your passport saying he's allowed to live in australia forever has it made a difference for you in getting visas or in moving around at all with other countries yeah um look i think a lot of a lot of i don't think it's necessarily made it easier for me to get visas in other countries um, but I definitely think that it's taken away a lot of that my anxiety coming back, you know, because I'm sure every 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 immigrant or every person on a weak quote unquote weak passport, you know, we harbor that anxiety everywhere we go, you know, um, and and, when, and whenever you come back, about it, 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 it's 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 just nice to just like know that it's it's just like one less thing to worry about to yeah to know that like you know yeah fine i live here and i can kind of almost call this place home um and 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 no one's just going to pull the rug up from under me all of a sudden so i think it's largely a peace of mind thing but in and as far as like going trying to get visas to go to other countries no it doesn't change anything um and a lot of my passport is still my passport you know, it's, I'm still an African on an African passport, and um, everything that goes with that is is still my my daily experience when when I travel. And it 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 it's definitely very interesting when when I travel with I don't know if you've experienced this when you travel with, you know, people, friends, or, or otherwise your partner or somebody who's on a, um, on a different visa or maybe, maybe uh, sorry a slightly more, uh, powerful passport. Like yeah. you really get to to see that contrast of like, oh, okay, you know, just can you share it's, like, it's, yes, can you? I know we've spoken about this before, uh, traveling yeah. with people who are on, yeah, I'll just say it like it is, Western passports or like the really strong mm-hmm. Asian passports or just Western passports, right? <laughs> yeah, There's yeah, a yeah, yeah. General innocent cluelessness about the African passport experience. Like, can you share an experience that you that you're thinking of now? Yeah, definitely. Look, I I wouldn't even say like just the African passport because like there's certainly people who have it worse than us. You know, like you've got you've got you 
if you look at the the, the the passport power rankings, like you know, people who are some of your friends are from like Pakistan or you know Ooh, places, yes. yeah, That's places true. like that where there's there's um, additional quote unquote you know security considerations. Like those guys definitely get the runaround, right? So it's all it's all relative. We get it, um, but um, I I've you know like you know having lived here for for so long, my you know. My my friends, for example, will 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 would be, you know, would be would be traveling when we you 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 you'd get to, um, we'd be in the UK, for example, and I met some of my Australian friends there, and you know, their initial thought is like, yo, man, let's let's just let's just hop on a flight and go to Spain and catch the Barcelona game, you know, and it's so innocent, and they they're literally talking to you about this as they're booking the flight. <laughs> and you're just like, hmm. yeah. If I wanted, if yeah. I wanted to go to Spain, right, that that is an actual <laughs> decision that had to be made months ago. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really. Have, have you had any experiences yeah. like that? I mean, I can think of the time when I was in uh, Laos, and I was with this girl who had just bought a motorbike. She just bought a motorbike. Mm. And she She's like, come on, man, let's just go to Vietnam, man. I just, I'm just so over this. <laughs> ah, and I was like, you know what? I can't. Like, it was, I don't know. It was just, because a lot of people, I know you've been to, you've been to Vietnam. A lot of people do, a lot of people do like Laos, Vietnam, Thailand. It's just a thing. You just hop. You're just like, mm. ah, look at us with our, like, ooh, did it to you. And I was just like, I want to. But I literally need to go to a consulate or embassy. I can't even do this stuff online. So ah, it warms my heart to hear that. <laughs> I, 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 I know the exact sort of feeling like even uh, like Australians like love to go to Bali. So like even when we're in, U, when we're in university, we, all my friends have just been like, because it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an ex easily accessible, it's, it's, it's less, it's less pricey, it's quite popular, like people go there in mass, especially young people. So I remember when we were in university, friends would just be like, guys, like we've got a week off, like why not just fly over to Bali? And I might be wrong about it now because I, I, I checked it recently and I know that I could go on my Botswana passport there, uh, visa free, I think for 30 days. But you know, don't quote me on that one. Same, you, you, I think you probably could. Yeah. I you probably could. Yeah. yeah, you probably could, yeah. But what I'm saying is I remember I distinctly remember thinking years ago that I couldn't. And that was wow. always such a thing for me that like I was like, I can't I just I if I'm going to spend time, right, applying for visas, I was going to I'm I'm of course gonna have to like gonna reserve it for those big holidays where I I'm I'm taking off big bucket list items, you know, yeah. like I'm gonna, if I'm gonna go to a consulate, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I might as well go to a consulate to go to a massive country like the United States where I'm going to see a lot and experience a wide breadth of, you know, just 50 states. Like I can do so much in 50 states, yeah. you know, um, as opposed to if I go to a tiny island place that's where I might need, if I needed to go somewhere else, even if it's nearby, I'd still need to, to get another visa, you know? Mm -hmm. So those are some of the considerations that, that that you know, this whole thing, that the, these kind of weaker passports, they, 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 they cause you to have. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know, like, you, yeah. you know what I mean, right? I hear you, and I, and I, something that I'm hearing is, I'm hearing the love of travel, and I'm also hearing the being largely deterred by the visa application process for the most, you try and take the path of least resistance because there's actually a, a nice list of countries that Botswana can go to visa free and you've gone to some some nice places. And yeah, yeah. there are places that it sounds like you would also go were it not such a schlep to get a visa or, you yeah. know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And yeah, and a lot of the times, like it's not even it's not even that you probably can't get the visa because, like, like I said to you, like I, you know, the I, the whole idea of understanding privilege is understanding when you have it. You know, um, Botswana is an Af is, is 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 an African passport, and it's definitely not a Western passport. But I definitely know that with some of my friends, 
suffer inconveniences that are worse than mine, right? For sure, hundred percent. Um, yeah. So, but so, I'm still. But like a lot of this stuff is just it. It just it's 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 such a psychological barrier. Like yeah. just that that in that initial idea of even beginning to go like the, the way I look at some of my friends who were born in other places they just the freedom like they, right. they 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 have this mental freedom to they're only they're only stopped by the power of their imagination like I remember when I was when the first time I ever got one of my friends from here to come to Botswana and how it happened right this person was in the UK and it, they they want they mentioned they wanted to come and they kind of they they kind of you know like you know for 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 us right if I'm going to be planning to go to halfway across the world like it's a thing you know there's visa applications you have to make sure your money is right you have to but this Australian boy was kind of like in the UK and at some point decided yo dude I'm gonna come over that side and and we'll hang for a few weeks are you ready to have me and I was like yeah. And you know, the following week he was arriving, and I was picking him up at the airport, like like it was nothing. And I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was, I was just, I was just kind of like, wow. Like in the, in the back of my mind, like wow, like that, <laughs> like that is like, like, yeah, just like that. Yeah, so that's very interesting. I, I like that you mentioned the psychological considerations that go into play. And you actually made, switched me on to something, Lone, that I didn't realize I was doing as well. The fact that some mm. places, I've, I've just before, I have told myself that some places are, I can't go, I'm, it's too hard, or I don't, I haven't even checked if I can go or not, simply because, like mm. you said, I've been conditioned to just know that it's always, I'm always going to have to have a pile of documents and it's always, it's going to be so tiring. And sometimes it's just like you just write countries off without thinking about it. But I'm really yeah, excited yeah. that that hasn't really deterred you, that you still do travel. And it's exciting. And I do want to ask you, Lone, do you know many other Botswana who are traveling? Like for pleasure? Yeah. Well, I think I, I, online, like occasionally nowadays, I'm starting to see more and more. I think... The black, the idea of a, the black traveler as a whole, I'd say over the last five years is gaining a little bit more traction. Cause I don't know about you, but like, you know, when you travel in, in a lot of places, you know, um, you struggle to find any black people, period. The only black people that I saw there were largely people who you could tell live there, you know, like they live there or work there or were expats. And if they were black, um, a lot. Uh, some of them were like, you, you know, if you, the few that I spoke to were like Americans and you know, Europeans, like you know, British people or something. Um, they, I didn't meet many. Westerners. I met a few South Africans. I mean, I met a new South African. Yeah, black Westerners, and I didn't, but I didn't meet a lot of like. I only met a, I met a few South Africans by chance, but Botswana, no. Sorry, that's a long convoluted way to say. Botswana, I'm starting to see some Botswana tra who travel, and some of these people are my actual friends. <laughs> yeah. So, Shout out um, to but, Kuda, who did, where did he go? Kuda did, I, Kuda, Kuda, did he, uh, he, yeah, they were in India. I, I know they, they did, they did a, a whole Northern Indian trip on bikes. Yes. Uh, a few years ago. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's, um, that's, just other uh, other randoms as well, um, but certainly not not on the scale of like you know people who travel full time, you know like you know like digital nomads or anything like that. Nah, not so much. Yeah, but why do you think that is? Why do you think Botswana are not like? Oh my God, let's just go to Malawi. Let's just go backpack in Malawi or like yo like even like like you were doing in the beginning, just visa free countries for Botswana like Fiji, Singapore, like. Yeah, Nepal. I, mean, I don't know. If Nepal there, there generally, there, there generally isn't a culture of travel um, in the country to begin with. Um, I mean, people don't even do travel um, within the country itself to touristy places. You know, the first time that I really, really got to see 
some of the really touristy places in northern Botswana, like you know, the Okavango Delta is like well, world renowned beauty, like biodiversity is incredible, like pretty much Nat Geo and you know, <laughs> BBC. Yeah, you know, wild Level. people would basically camp out there and film all the specials there, and you know, you hear about it and we know about it, but we never go. Yeah, you know, um, yeah. I think it, it's a multifactorial thing, um, but it is, they, they, traditionally there's no culture of travel, but also, and that that has its roots in the fact that a people normally are. If people are going to be traveling anywhere, they're going to be going from the cities to their home villages. Because, you know, like these these are young countries, right? Like these are all young countries where people were all living in villages. And after colonialism, there would be, okay, that's the capital now. Probably, you know, mid, 20, mid 20th century, a lot of these places would have like a capital or something or early 20th century. And then people would move there. So people still have the, their roots in the villages. If people are going to go somewhere, they're going to go back home. So one, two, finances, you know, yeah. um, these are these are emerging economies um, right. with a shift of people into the middle class. Anyway, these are my theories, um, but yeah. I think with a shift of people into the middle class, you're starting to see more people have have that, you know, more disposable income to try out experiences and 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 then go do things. And if you've got limited disposable income right. um, and you're, you're, you're looking to do a trip, I think a lot of the times, like, people aren't going to go to your obscure places. They're going to go to, you know, South Africa. Yes. You know, you know you're, they're going to go to places, you know, that they're not going to go down the, the you know, the, they're not going to go down paths which which are unknown. You know, they're going right. to go to places where they know they're going to get yeah. back. You know, Cape Town, yeah. uh, yeah. Namibia. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. for you, yeah. what I'm hearing from you right now is you feel, and it makes a lot of sense to me, that the reason why perhaps a lot of Botswana are not necessarily like backpacking is mm. largely due to the economy and not necessarily because of like visa deterrence, which may be the case for other African passports. Not necessarily Botswana going, oh, it's too hard to, to go here. Let me just not. It's rather the yeah. disposable income thing probably. Yeah, it's probably the disposable income thing. But the thing is like, that's the rate limiting step anyway. Before you even think about where you're going, it's can I go? So, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not going to tackle those other problems. like. I'm thinking for a lot of Botswana after they get over that hump, like a lot of the, the you know, more modern Botswana or people of means who are probably looking to travel a little bit further, um, you are probably see, they're probably experiencing those other problems of like, oh, okay, maybe I don't go to, you know, I don't travel, you know, all through Asia or I go, don't go through all these places because, you know, my visa, I need specific visas and a specific consulate. So, you know, those, like if you're gonna, you know, if, if, if it, it, it becomes a much more attractive proposition, right? To, yeah. to go to Thailand, Cambodia, and Laos, if you can go to put all together and go, right? But if you, t I, t I tell me, if you tell me somebody who isn't on unlimited income or I, I don't have unlimited resources and money, that I have to go to a specific place, so the, the backpacking thing becomes less attractive because I, I I'm I'm more inclined to go to places which I'm one guaranteed entry, two I am guaranteed to get good bang for my buck. You know, right. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, yeah. To me, so that, I'm more likely yeah. to end up going to yeah, I'm more likely to end up going to South Africa than than going to. Thailand alone, whereas whereas the dream that's being sold is Thailand, Cambodia, and Laos. That's the package that's being sold as that's the backpacking dream. And yeah. but if you just go Thailand alone, if you look at Thailand alone, yeah, it's great, but maybe somebody might go, oh, maybe let me go to South Africa alone first. Right. Right. Baby steps, yeah, like you know, okay. Yeah. 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 So okay. 
Yeah, that's a very that's very. Or good they might, or they, or, my, or, or, or they might, or they might, or they might reach a conclusion like myself, like oh, Thailand first, or let's go to the United States first. Where I'll get fifty states, one visa, and then I can roam around as much as I want and hey. you know, get a variety of experiences. Hey, you know, getting bang for your buck. Yeah. Getting bang for your buck. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, that's right. I like that. Ah, this is this is yeah, this is super enriching I, for me. As as someone who grew up in Botswana, but not uh, really having the same sort of experience of travel as perhaps a Botswana, this is interesting for me yeah. to hear. So, um, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you know, I was raised my whole life in Botswana. We my parents were from two different countries, so we knew that traveling was first of all we had to travel to get home, and so yeah. yeah. So yeah. you, you perhaps grow up with 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 a with, I mean like that's the life of an immigrant, isn't it? Like or, or the child of immigrants. It's like the idea of like picking up your bags and like because if I think about it, think about all the kids who we went to high school with because you know we went to high school together. All the kids who went to high school with who were um, children of immigrants, yeah, are usually the people who ended up further away. You know, they're the people who are a lot of the times in all corners of the globe. Because, like, I think you're just used to that idea of, you know, what I'll pack up my bags and I'll go somewhere else if things aren't, aren't. Uh, if something I seek is somewhere else, I'm prepared to go. Right. So, right. Right. Yeah. 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 And then there's you who ended yeah. up in Australia, and that actually brings me to, um, as we wrap up this amazing session of just like ah, uh, so many cathartic experiences. I want to know, Lonnie. Um, um, um. Yeah. Um, you're in Australia, and I have vowed mm -hmm. to you so many times that I will never set foot there. I told you that if I ever want to visit you, you're gonna have to meet me in Southeast Asia because I've heard about the spider. <laughs> I heard about the crocodile. <laughs> nobody got time. But there's a reason you're still there. Could you please give us some reasons why it would be awesome to backpack through Australia for reasons? I mean, other than the fact that it's it's beautiful, but what is there to do mm. and see to get bang for your buck? Because it's a whole continent, right? It's huge. And also, mm. what can I expect from the Australian community? as an African backpacker, hitchhiking or mm. just backpackers or just hanging yeah. out, being an African, traveling Australia. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a continent. It's a country which is a continent. So you've got, you know, uh, an abundance of, of things to see in every state. So, you know, big continent, but people mostly live on the east coast, and some a little bit on on the top end and and on the west. Um, so you know, so many so many beaches, sort of unlimited like kilometers of just like pristine coastline. You know what I always say to people. What I always say to people um, whenever we've gone on a beach holiday somewhere else. Like maybe maybe not like you know in the Pacific like Fiji because that was like beautiful and looked amazing. But I remember kind of I've been to places like, you know you'd be in Hawaii and stuff you'd be on the beach and you'd be like this is beautiful and stuff. But like to be honest, like Australia like holds its own as far as like beaches goes. Like different kinds of beaches all along the coast. Like and it won't even be like oh this is just a resort. No, it's just it's just wild beach like right just you know like not too far from me in, in the state there's there's a place called the 90 mile beach it's just like a beach for 90 miles like it's it's whoa it's it's it's, it's amazing so for example if you if you ever come down here and you do a road trip or, along the east coast it's you know you, you're starting out in the south in like melbourne which is very cosmopolitan and, and um there's a lot of like rich experiences. There's there's a lot of food and entertainment, but there's also interesting wilderness to check out. Um, and you know, you're sort of going from like a you know temperate climate with like woods and stuff, and then you travel further up north to New South Wales, the state where Sydney is, where it's a little bit warmer. 
Um, and then you get up to Queensland where it's, it's a lot more tropical, you know, all the way up to the top wow. end like Darwin. So you're getting, you're getting a, a nice diversity as you travel up. And then you can go down the middle and go to like, you know, into the outback to like Alice Springs and stuff like that and end up in, in Darwin as well. So, and, and, and it's, 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 uh, it's, um, it's, it's well-traveled, especially for backpackers. Like people are used to the idea of backpackers coming here. Um, usually I've, you know, you'll see people, you know, if you, once you get out and about, you see there's a lot of hostels around. There's a lot of um, a lot of backpackers will, will, will like rent out vans and stuff and just basically um, you know go out and like pick fruit in the farms for some money and then you know go out and do their thing. Um, I haven't had those experiences personally because I've always lived here, um, but you know you do you do come across backpackers um, all the time. Okay. I have not, however, come across black backpackers or African backpackers, let me put it that way. It's usually Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge <Yeah. fucking> accepted. <laughs> um look, for, for the most part, I think I think you will you you will you will you will have a good time. I think you'll you'll have a good time. I think you'll I think I think you know for the most part, like you'll you will have positive experiences. Um I, I don't feel like a lot of people would go out of their way to, you know, make you feel unwelcome or unsafe or anything like that. Cool. Just by virtue of like, you know, we're used to backpackers. You know, I don't know if we're used to African backpackers that much, but you know, we're used to backpackers nonetheless. Um, but I'm being very, you know, I always because. You can definitely hear it in my voice, right? Like I'm, I'm leaving that room for. Oh, you know, you have to have your wits about you, as if you're gonna be, you know, an African uh, black backpacker anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think, I think, I think for the most part, I would be, I would be very surprised if you. No, I would be surprised if you, if you were to come back and say I, I had some horrendous experiences here. Okay. I yeah. think I think the country the country is so big and there's such a, a wide variety of experiences that even if one or two might not be great on the whole this place would provide you with, with great experiences. Okay. The drawbacks would be I think I I, it, I think it would be it would Is be, it the spiders? Place, no, it's no. The spiders, right? It's not the spiders that they are there, but it's an exaggeration. It's not that bad. I think it's 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 the it's 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 the the the, the you know this place just by getting here, it's far from everything, so it can be a bit expensive. It's, yeah, it's um, nice. yeah. Flights and everything, and accommodation and everything. Um, that's why I, a lot of backpackers, you know, get jobs on farms and stuff like that. And I know a lot of them tend to be like European. So I don't yeah. know what 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 are the visa considerations there? Um, it's for, you're for Africans. About, you're talking about the working holiday visa. Mm, that's the one. To any African countries except South Africa, yeah. I believe I could be wrong, but there, <laughs> I can't just show up and be like, "Oh, I'm going to work on a farm to earn money." Like, no, I have to show them that I have all the money first. Yeah, no, it's just a regular yeah. Western visa when where, where, where that's concerned. Yeah. 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 I, I didn't I didn't I didn't imagine it would be <laughs> yeah <laughs> it would be any it would be any different um, yeah. yeah but like once I think once once you if you if you I think if 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 you're if you if you've got you know if you've saved up a little bit of money and and you've got a bit of time on your hands and you could you know you could you could possibly come here and rent rent a van or buy a van for a few thousand dollars and you know have the adventure of a lifetime. I, I definitely yeah. think it, 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 Yeah. That is exciting when you came from the land down and uh, oh no, but yeah. you've switched me on to Australia. I, I definitely I mean I've always been I'm just gonna be a little stereotypical now. Like I loved Steve Irwin. Like I wept. Like you I don't know if you remember, but I was sad. Like I came to school and I was like, you guys like they killed him. Oh no. Yeah. They killed him no, you guys. I, 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 I was touched as well, man. Like he, yeah, we he, like, he was no guy. Was, guy was a guy was a national treasure. 
he was. But anyway, if you come to if you come to Melbourne, I've got a spare bedroom. I mean, if this is the spare bedroom, which I'm using as a study, so just, just, just let us know. Yeah, I'm, su I'm super excited, and it's it's so good to see you and to hear from you and to know that you've been traveling, like you went to all these amazing places. And so, just just to close off. Where are you hoping to go next? Are you still having inhibitions about, you know, going to Europe? Like, do you want to come to Africa? Like, what, what's, where do you hope to go to next when the COVID shitstorm has blown over? Um, I, I mean, you know, having, I just, I just did like, you know, you know, Southeast Asia, I was like in Vietnam. So I was really hoping to do like Japan or something like that. But also Japan is obviously a place where I'd need a visa um, coming from Botswana. Um, right. But I, yeah, you've been to Korea, right? Yes. Yeah. What was that visa experience like? I had to, I was in, I was in Namibia at the time and I had to yeah. DHL my passport. I had to send my passport away to South Africa, yeah. to the Korean embassy, yes, to the Korean embassy in, in South Africa. Mm, Hyun Gyeong, my best friend, uh, we went to school with her. Shout out to Hyun in Korea and Seoul. Shout she had, had like <laughs> intimate documents, like bank cards, and like, woo, she had to send those to me. Um, yeah. But it was, it was just your, like your garden variety, like shitty visa application where you send your passport away if the embassy is not in, yeah. the, but, in um, the country. Yeah. I had all the documents. That's the thing with these with these visas. If you have whatever they want to see, mm. you're golden. Like you can go. I expect yeah. Japan will be you the are, same. Yeah, I often just I overwhelm them with information. I give them slightly more. Whatever they want, I give them ten percent more. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like I, I, I'm always like, oh, you, oh, you you want you want a bank statement? I'll give for like the last three months. I'll give you four months. How about that? You know. <laughs> Um, so yeah, no, uh, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So, but I was hoping to go to 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 Japan, um, and that that would be the next place. But also, I've I've also kind of also been thinking about doing a little bit more like actual African travel, like maybe have a stopover in East Africa. Well, anyone who ever see this, Africa is not a monolith. It's fifty well, fifty four different countries at this point. Uh, however, don't quote me on that because there's new nations every day. But um, there's so many different countries, you can split it up into regions. So at the moment, I've only done Southern Africa. I want to see a bit of East Africa. Hopefully one day I'll see some a little bit of West Africa. Um, right. So I, I think, I think that, uh, you know, as, as, as an African who's been to other places, the more that I've been to other places, I'm kind of like, oh, such a shame that, you know, I, I, you know, I haven't done more in my own continent. Right, that's so true. It's like mm. it's like a return to the motherland. Like it's all like everyone everywhere is like it's like this like pilgrimage back to Africa. You know, everyone is like, Let's, you know, it's interesting. Well, if you guys go. have come down, I've got a spare room here in Kigali. Rwanda, nice. you guys can chill the fuck out. This place is amazing. Yeah, dude, I'm I might literally I'm legitimately might take you up on that next time I'm yeah. I'm flying back home. Yes. I think cause this year was meant to be like a chilled out year in terms of work for me and like let have less let have a little bit more travel, but um nope. unfortunately okay. the world conspired. <laughs> yeah. So it would have been like I I I genuinely I'm I, I'm I would genuinely put a stop over like you know for like a few days in like rwanda or somewhere before i head on i'm definitely looking at doing it every african needs to visit rwanda every african needs to visit rwanda lone thank you so much thank you so much this has been such a pleasure thank you so much for joining me the, the pleasure's all mine man the pleasure's all mine I'm super excited i'm gonna make you more active on social media because i'm gonna keep demanding that you post travel photos when <laughs> when you start traveling again. Um, <laughs> you know, so. I, funnily enough, I, I just looked back over the, like I had, but like over, I was looking back over the last 10 years um, of like photos. Cause I was just, you know, we've just been locked up and, and quarantined and all this stuff. Time, yeah. And I was, 
And then I realized like I do have quite a lot of photos that are, I think I sent one to my friends and someone's like, dude, you can hold an out on us. You know? I mean, I do have like quite a bit of photos and then footage of me just like having fun experiences on all, all these places that I've been to. But I, I certainly look to add more places for sure. I haven't done enough traveling. Um, I, I want to, I want to, I just certainly want to see more of the world before, you know, mm -hmm. the next time we decide to make the world implode. Yes. <laughs> and you certainly, certainly can. Thank you, Lone. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, please check out my blog, www.thesubsaharanflanners.com, where I will be writing about people like Lone, people like me, Africans who are traveling on African passports and my YouTube channel where I'll be posting awesome vibing conversations like this so that more Africans know that we are here and we are traveling. Lots of love to everyone and let's get more Africans traveling.